So it's the 60s in Brooklyn, and there's this guy awaiting sentencing in court. In kind of a lull in the in the room, he's able to grab the gun off the bailiff, shoot the bailiff between the eyes, killing him instantly. Obviously, panic ensues, and he runs out of the courtroom. He makes it several blocks, and his last hope to evade the police is those underground subway entrances. He makes a beeline and guns it right to the entrance, when suddenly he's tackled, apprehended, and brought back to court by an off-duty officer. And so the mayor of New York City decides to reward Officer Ferdinand Alcinder with the Medal of Honor, much to the delight of his teenage son, Lou Alcinder, better known as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I am not black. I'm not the son of a cop and not a six-time NBA champion, at least not yet. But if you've watched my other videos, you know how I think it's important to discuss topics like race and gender, regardless of your perspective. I originally read A Black Cop's Kid by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 2021, and I reread it for this video. Would highly recommend it. It's free for anybody who has Amazon Prime, and I'll put the link down in the description. <laughs> Kind of a random fact, but when Marilyn Monroe is singing Happy Birthday, Mr. President to John F. Kennedy, Kareem's father is actually one of the ensemble members, but he was a cop first and foremost. When Kareem recounts that his mom was being accused of shoplifting, wrongly so, Officer Alcinder came in and defused the whole situation. Officer Alcinder was not much for talking with a young Kareem and was by no means an activist at least not in the traditional sense. However, Kareem continuously admired his dad for wanting to be a role model for the black community and restore trust in the police from a marginalized people. Kareem's dad represented the system, and the system had to be good. It had to know what was best for everyone. After all, why else would his dad be a part of it? So Kareem credits two events for jumpstarting his career in social justice. Emmett Till was 14 when he was brutally murdered by several white men for allegedly just talking to a married white woman. This was later revealed to have never happened, and we know it never happened because the murderers confessed to it in a magazine after they were acquitted by an all-white jury, knowing that they couldn't be tried twice for the same crime. The second was Kareem's selection to the Harlem Youth Action Project. And it's through this that Kareem realizes how many lies he's been told. This was before Black History Month as a concept even arose. He recounts that in his primary schools, his teachers would tell him there is no such thing as black history. The culmination of this experience was his selection to cover Martin Luther King's upcoming address to Harlem. After hearing from Dr. King and even asking a question, Kareem headed south to write a piece on the funeral of James Powell a 15-year-old who had been killed by an off-duty officer. And just like that, Kareem found himself running for his life in the midst of a thousand-person riot. The police, with a dozen megaphones pleading with the protesters, go home, go home, the crowd replied, we are home. Five days, 118 injuries, and 460 arrests later, the off-duty officer was acquitted by a grand jury. So how does Kareem, after learning about systemic injustices and suppression of their history, square that with his father wearing the literal badge of everything Kareem is calling into question? Well, in his words, I knew my father was a good man, but was he doing a good thing for our people? Even after all this, Kareem's confidence in his father is relatively unshaken. If his dad were there, James Powell would be alive. If all cops would just be like his dad. Black cops were just 5% of the total NYPD, despite being 14% of the city's population. And that was in the 60s. Right now, it's a similar underrepresentation. The police are a crucial role in society, and they can be a huge reason why we feel safe while also being on the front line for crimes, mental health issues, and more. Kareem understands how difficult it is being a cop in general, much less being a black cop. If you contradict white officers' biases against minority, you're too soft on crime. But if you don't, you're effectively complicit in the very racism that would affect your kids. There's a clear unfair choice for black cops. Are you black or are you blue? As Kareem's legendary collegiate career with UCLA starts, his athletic talent is clear. 
and he uses this to speak out against injustice when he was invited to the famous Cleveland Summit in 1967. Kareem was the youngest of the athletes, and this was by no means a rubber stamp committee. Jim Brown himself served in the military along with many others in the coalition, some even in World War II. And there was Kareem, just 20 years old, meeting with Muhammad Ali himself. Kareem describes the hours of deliberations as tense and contentious. Some of the members came in desperate to try and convince Ali to accept military service, as by that point, he had lost millions, faced potential jail time, and a three-year ban from boxing. Ultimately, the committee stood behind Ali. And this was the period where Kareem noticed more and more hostility from the press. It's funny because I always thought that Kareem hated the press because he was just shy, but that narrative is completely twisted. The harassment that Kareem faced when he converted to Islam is honestly disgusting. But I'm not here to talk about Kareem's NBA career. That will save for a different time. Kareem has gone on to write mystery novels, countless pieces in world-renowned publications about the beauty of black history and how important it is to have a society that accepts all of us. At the same time, he has a nuanced perspective on how unproductive it is to demonize entire groups, and that goes for black Americans and the police. Kareem's dad didn't like to talk. He led by example, and Kareem has aimed to do the same, not because of some MVPs or championships, but by speaking out for things that he believed in and encouraging everyone to love and respect one another. Ferdinand Alcindor died December 13th, 2005, but the principles he stood for will always live on. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe. I had a lot of fun making this video, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to let me know in the comments. I hope you have a great rest of your day.